What did you think when you heard that he had a hit list? Well, that was scary because um, they they didn't release the names at first. And then there was like, you know, small town rumors. Well, there was multiple lists. And, you know, but we're not going to tell you who's on the list. And then there was rumors he was going to like shoot up, you know, the Burger King or something. So, I mean, it was, it was crazy. At this point, have you heard any details of exactly what he did to his parents? I'm sure you have, but talk about um, what you have heard and, and your thoughts and feelings on, on what actually happened that night. Well, my understanding was he was doing it for a ritual. Um, he needed blood and, you know, he, I know that he shot his dad and decapitated him and had his head in a punch bowl. and try to like disembowel his mom was my understanding of it. And then, but he had plans to kill his brother too, but his brother wasn't home. He couldn't find his brother. So that was, you know, but then he, on the list, I guess his plan was to do it in intervals, like kill so many people one night and so many people the next night kind of thing. But his plan got all kiboshed. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, uh, obviously, as a 17-year-old, you it's not well thought out, and you don't think about ramifications. And well, right, your brain isn't even fully developed, so like cognitively, you're not even processing. You know, if I murder my parents, oh, I'm gonna have freedom now, or I'm gonna, you know, be closer to in his mind Satan. But I mean. That didn't, it didn't go the way that he thought it was going to go at all. I know. I, I reached out to the um, the prison, the prison he's at, it's like maybe an hour outside of Columbus. And mm -hmm. uh, I reached out to him and they asked him if he wanted to do an interview and he turned me down. Um, because I think, I think he's up for parole in the next couple of years. Yeah. So this is going to, I know he, what he's obviously trying to do is stay low, low key, mm -hmm. hoping that he can get out. That yeah. guy should never get out. And I don't think he yeah. will. I don't think he will either, but that's another reason why I wanted my, you know, for safety purposes, because I, if he remembers, then that, it just, it's, it's too uncomfortable for me for that. And um, it was too, the whole thing was just unnerving. You know, for me, the pictures that you have printed off from the newspaper from around, the, I honestly, when I look at him at his age now, it doesn't phase me at all. But when I see those pictures from the, you know, the time frame, it, it like brings back the memories instantly. And it terrifies, like that same feeling is there because that's who I remember. And the craziest thing for me was, you know, I didn't know his name. He's on my bus, you know. But for me, I didn't realize, like, when the next day, the next morning after, the, you know, when the news got out about the murders and everyone's like, oh, you know, this is what happened. He did this and that. It's It didn't register to me. You know, I didn't think, oh, that's that, you know, kid I rode the bus with. Didn't even think about it. It wasn't until I saw the pictures in the newspaper and on the news where it was like everything just rushed at me at once and it all came together. And I'm like, I, I was terrified. What do you remember saying to your parents and others about that after you realized that you rode the bus with him? I didn't talk about it. I didn't want any attention. I didn't want anyone ask me about it. I didn't want anyone worried about me. I didn't bring it up. I didn't, I just wanted it out, like gone, totally repressed it because it was the vibe and the feeling that he gave off. You know, I'm a nine, 10 year old kid. I have never in my life came across someone whose energy was so dark, so heavy, so it would make like the hairs on your neck stand up instant something was off gut feeling intuition kicked in like stay away from this guy stay you know steer clear of him